You are listening to Hmong American Buzz. So the biggest thing is to make sure that you are you're starting it with the right intent of whatever it might be um, that you have the right intent, and it's not about money. I mean, money is going to be tied to it, but that can't be your main focus. It has to be something bigger than that. Like for me, I mean. It's- Hey, how's it going, Aaron? I'm doing good, Sue. How about yourself? I'm doing as good as always. Uh, just uh, taking time, cleaning the new house, and just uh, setting everything up. You are putting a lot of new work into the house, huh? Yeah, of course. This is me and my wife's first official house. So, yes, a lot of work. I want to hire somebody for that. In what? fact, you know what you should do? What? You should get somebody to advertise or market your house. So somebody else can come and clean it for you. No, that's <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to find a way to shoe on our guest today. Who's our guest today? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was terrible, Aaron. That that's a uh, minus right there. We'll uh, so, keep you out there. So, anyways, <laughs> our special guest for today is uh, Christian Ying, and he <laughs> had he uh, runs his own marketing slash. Um, yeah, marketing yeah, agency. Called Peer Growth. Peer Growth, yep. It's more like an influencing slash uh, marketing agency where he helps out small businesses in the, uh, from what I've known so far, within the uh, Twin Cities area. All uh, right on. And uh, in this interview, you're going to hear him talk about various local company and outside of the state company that uh, he helped marketing. Yes, that's correct. And uh, he's a very bright and young guy too. So um, if you guys are listening on this episode today, we hope that you guys will take in all his words uh, if you're interested in any uh, marketing or influencing things in general, then he's a guy to listen to. All right, enough of us in this awkward introduction. Let's get to the podcast. I agree. (laughs) So uh, Christian, how are you doing today? I'm good about you. I'm doing good. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Before we start, can you share with the audience a little about yourself? Uh, yeah, so my name is Christian Yang, uh, born and raised here in Minnesota. I have my own uh, marketing agency called Pure Golf Media, and so uh, day-to-day I'm kind of working on that. Um, for the most part, we've helped like a lot of like small businesses in the metro area um, You know, learn how to communicate through social media to their audience to actually create like a real relationship with their audience. Um, That's really our main goal with Pure Golf Media. Um, On the side, you know, I'll do some fun stuff. I have my own podcast too called The Grind where, you know, I interview uh, influential and people or or entrepreneurs. So those are kind of the two things that uh, I've been focusing on. Oh, nice. We got another podcast right here. Awesome. (laughs) Right on. Podcasts are important. They're popping. I think... A lot of people have it. I was just at a conference this past, let's see, yeah, yesterday morning uh, about podcasts. And there was people there who have like media, co- or media companies that do podcasts. And so it was real cool to just see their process and how they do that. So podcasting is huge, man. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's uh, a lot of uh, work on the side as well. Like people don't realize how hard it is for us to add <laughs> all this stuff too. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of work. Uh, on the technical side of stuff, so understandable. So you said Pure Growth Media. Um, so yep. h- how did you start a Pure Growth Media? Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. So like I graduated college and then I started working at a big health insurance company for about like eight months or so. I didn't like it um, at all. I kind of just wanted to bang my head through the computer screen every day <laughs> because I didn't enjoy it at all. So then like, you know, I quit without any real plan and uh, you know I just I had a degree in communications and then I just was looking around at all these businesses they're not utilizing social media and I was like why not most of them don't have time or they don't understand it they don't want to put the time to understand it you know some of them are like mom and pop shops and stuff like that so with me taking like my communication degree and then me seeing that white space and then me just you know having like a I guess a little knack for social media I just kind of put it all together and just started uh, my marketing company and I, that was about two and a half years ago. 
Are you a pretty recent graduate then? Or it's about, if yeah. you worked at eight uh, months? Okay. So actually three years ago I graduated. So I wouldn't okay. say recent, but yeah. So what kind of uh, marketing service does Peer Growth Media provide? Yeah, I like to think we're pretty much both service. I mean, we do we do the creative side, so creative meaning like pictures and content and videos and all that type of stuff for businesses. But we also have the um, analytical side and the data side and the media buying side, which is you know where we're we're figuring out okay where are our um, clients and customers at and uh, you know what platforms are they on. So we help you know figure that out. So that's the market research part, and then. We execute the media buying, so, you know, buying media, like, you know, buying Facebook ads and stuff like that, um, and help the clients be able to utilize that in the best ways and use the best practices. And we also have the analytical side, which, you know, being able to take all that data that we've seen and all the market research that we see and just put it together to execute the best campaign. So, there, yeah, I mean, that's a lot, but that's kind of what we do. So, you say uh, you've been doing uh, peer media for eight months now? No, I've been doing peer growth media for about uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years? Yeah. So uh, how many people are, are, are uh, working with you for uh, peer media? <laughs> yeah, so mostly it's just myself. I mean, I don't have any employees or anything like that, but, uh, you know, I'll contract work out to, to you know, because, you know, I can't, I can't shoot a video for, you know, to save my life. I'm not really, like, that, that's not a thing of mine, so I'll, I'll right. put that out for somebody else to be able to do. I'm more on the back end type of stuff. So, yeah, I'll, I'll contract work out and I have a good relationship with these contractors. They'll shoot videos, create content to, to be able to help me search my clients. All right, so uh, when you when you say uh, you do uh, pretty much uh, marketing advertising for uh, companies, is, is that strictly for social media or do you also like uh, make websites for them too? Yeah, we do. I mean, I'm not the great, uh, you know, the greatest website maker, but you know, I can make a basic one. You know, like I said, we work with contractors, so if a client needs like a full setup website, then you know, we can definitely contract some work out and help them help the contractor have like some direction on that. But uh, most of the time, our work is on social media because we just think that that's where all the attention is, yeah. and uh, we just want to be able to make sure you know we're getting the best return on investment for clients. And so, most of our stuff is digital, most of it is social media too. Uh, that okay. makes sense. I mean, not a lot of people today looks at uh, was it billboards and posters and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I don't know. I can't remember last time I picked up a newspaper. So uh, <laughs> or a magazine. But I mean, billboards still work. I think it's just I think it really just matters about you know getting the return on your investment and uh, and figuring out you know where where can you, how can you, where are people's attention as well at the same time, you know, and everybody's on social media, everybody has a phone. So, you know, you want to be able to focus your attention on there and figure out, you know, how you can utilize that. I think billboards still work because, you know, I think there's relatively, I don't, I don't know about the, the pricing on them, but I think they've gone down. And so, you know, if you utilize them, right, like somebody here that does a good job, it's probably Chris, Chris Linda. I'm sure you guys have seen his billboard, but he buys like, you know, tens and 20 billboards and just all in a row. And like, you're like, who is this dude? Because, He's done a good job of like buying at price places, and he knows like if more people see him uh, more than once when they're driving, then you know more than likely they'll be able to utilize that. So it's more about like figuring out where attention is and where it's underpriced and how to utilize that in the best way. Gotcha. Yeah, I saw uh, Chris Lindahl's billboard. Was it? He's running something for twenty twenty eight. Am I correct? <laughs> I think he just did that as like a funny way. Oh, uh, gotcha. I don't think he's running for anything. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you see his billboards everywhere. That's a true statement, though. Yeah, it sticks yeah. to your mind, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know, like, when I used to, when I ran a campaign, when I did Adam Yang's campaign, he was running for judge back in November. We helped him out. Uh, he bought a billboard, and they could run from, like, 2000 to $4,000 every, like, for, like, two weeks. So, you know. Um, if you utilize them the right ways, then you know you don't want to buy a billboard that's blocked. But like if you buy the billboards on the highways and you know just figuring it out where people will see it, then you know it could work. It just depends. Okay, I want to go back to. Did you say two thousand for only two weeks? Correct. What? Yeah. I assume it's like a, a few months or not nah. longer. No. <laughs> It's about two weeks. Again, it, it depends on where it is too. Like, if you want the highway spots, those are gonna be a lot more, you know, pricier. 
But uh, if you want like somewhere out in like the suburbs, it might be cheaper. So it just depends. But to be honest, I myself like if if you're local, then sure, must have built one. But like if you're trying to reach like a mass audience, social media is the way to go. Yeah, that's true. So uh, I'm I was going through your、uh, peer growth media website. And、uh, I saw that you also did、uh, some other projects for what is it?、Uh, the Tiger Bite Brewery. That's Mon Brewery, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I haven't been there before, but I've always wanted to go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah.、Uh, yeah. Um, they're real cool friends of mine, so they're doing some great things. Nice.、Um, where they're located? Because I'm curious too. <laughs> yeah, they're all、uh, they're in Saint Paul. Oh, okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Do you know where Randolph Avenue is? Uh, uh no, but I'm pretty sure I can search that up. It's next to like Kegan Case. Have you ever been Kegan Case? Yes, I love that place. It's down the block. Gotcha.、Okay. Yeah. And uh, you also did a soda hot and cold too, right? They're、uh, they serve ice cream. Isn't it like kind of like Thai ice cream, right? Ro- rolled up ice cream. So yeah, like rolled ice cream, up ice cream.、Like、rolled. Yeah, it's rolled. Yeah, that's one of the. It's probably like one of the clients that we've done a, a super good job with. Um, but yeah, we've been with them for a while. Yeah, I really like how、um, when I was watching the videos, I was I really like how you uh captured um uh what they do, how you promote it out there and everything. That's pretty yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we figured out that you know that's the whole appeal of that whole concept is you know people just like watching the ice cream being rolled up. They like that experience, you know. And so we wanted to capture more of that and give that to the audience, so that you know they that drives people to come in and actually want to see it in person. So just. Just we wanted to, you know, make sure that that was a focus. Make sure that you know that whole process there is kind of caught and that's appealing, and that you know it will be able to, to help really like boost people's awareness about you know sort of being there and what they do. Oh yeah, definitely. Nowadays, it's all about、uh, video contents.、Um, uh, for me and personally, like I love watching videos. Like it's it just、um, what is it brings more of awareness. Like you understand、uh-huh. what you do more if you watch the video. Yeah, I think video is super powerful.、Um, I think that's the way that everybody's kind of going now is video, and that, that's just a way, a better way to communicate. Because, like you said, it's like super compelling, and it can be intriguing for people to be able to watch something. And a lot of people would rather, I think, just in my general opinion, I think videos will capture more attention than like a blog or something like that. You know, but I could be wrong because people can cons- consume in different ways. I just think video is just something that everybody kind of gets and like. And you, there's so many things you can do with video, so it's crazy. Prior to starting Pure Growth Media, were there any、uh, certificates or processes that you had to go through in order to establish your own marketing agency? No,、uh, not really. No, you, you just set up a business super easy. I think I bought my because you have to set up legally, right? So that process、yep. was、uh, to get the LLC was about like two hundred dollars. So super cheap to set up, and then you just go out and do your thing. I would say you know you you don't need certifications like there's like you can get like a Google Ad certification or you can get like a Facebook Blueprint certification Google Analytics certification but you don't really need those it helps make you look better when you go to people you know let's say your agency is like a Facebook partner then people be like okay they trust you more because Facebook has a proof agency but for the most part no I just bought my LLC and just went at it nice I like the、uh, going grinding right away like you get the most experience out of that. I guess like what I did was like once I st- set that up, I also didn't really have too much social media experience, <laughs> to be frank. But、uh, <laughs> what I did was like first six months I made zero dollars. I、uh, went and like worked with a bunch of like nonprofits and just did their social media stuff for free,、um, just to gain experience. And then once I was able to do that, then I was able to get clients down the line because of my experience and what I've done for those free clients that I worked with. So. That all kind of just worked out. So、uh, I want to ask you, what's the、yeah. the process when uh somebody come up, a business comes to you?、Uh, I need your help marketing my business, and I have no idea where to start. What what do you? How do you normally start the process with them? I have to audit that client to see if that would be a, if we're a good fit. First,、um, you know, sometimes their product may not be the best, or you know, because like I can be the best marketer ever, but if your product sucks, then I can't do much for you. I'm just gonna expose your product, you know.、Um, But you know, auditing the client, making sure that you know their that the product and everything like that is great, and then figuring out, okay,、uh, do am I actually going to be able to provide a return on investment for this client? If so, then moving forward, how do we 
audit that client to be able to make sure that you know their that our services that we were providing them that they actually need it, and then just moving forward to seeing like seeing if the client still wants to work with us. If they do, then we can audit that client as far as like the digital right now to see which what white spaces there are that we can help provide value. And so like if they need a website update or if they need a brand relift, you know, like make sure that their brand looks good, and stuff like that. So we'll go to the auditing. Um, I think that's kind of the process um, there. And then uh, to, uh, to follow that, how long does it usually uh, take to to market a company out there with like shooting the video and all the social media and stuff like that? Yeah, so like it really depends, man. Uh, it depends on the client and, uh, you know, what the goal is really. So like an example would be, let's say we, let's say we're working with a client uh, we want to shoot a video, so that's going to take like um, maybe an hour to shoot, and then editing will probably take like a week, a week or two weeks, around that, depending on how large the video is. And then we'll set up some revisions to make sure that you know the client is is fine with the video that we made, and then we'll put the video out. So entirely, it could be like two weeks before a video gets out. Setting up campaigns are pretty simple. Um, but we have to do the market research before we set up the campaigns, so that may take like you know a week or so if we're really working on it. We don't, or if we're not too distracted by you know other clients or other things that's going on in life, and so uh, probably a good month before to, the to set up the client um, to be able to make sure that you know we have everything executing and firing away. Do, do you guys charge one flat rate, or do you guys charge by the hours? No, we charge on a monthly basis. Okay. Because because I was I was asking because a lot of people they they don't they don't like or they don't know what they want until they get a result that they like or like so yeah, yeah. As that I'm sure you spend plenty of time when you put all this work into a marketing campaign and the next thing like I don't like that change it up yeah I mean that's happened before but for the most part yeah our our rep, our our model is our business model is a monthly retainer they pay. Up, they pay. We set up usually like three months, six months contracts, and then uh, they'll pay every month. That's kind of how we set it up. Uh, so, are you doing peer growth media as a full time, Christian? Uh, so I was. Now I am. I work at a. <laughs> to be funny, uh, I mean, it's, this is kind of funny. I work at a bigger agency. <laughs> full time. Oh, gotcha. And then, okay. uh, and then I work on peer growth at night. So I'm learning a lot. To be able to see a bigger agency, how they run things, and then working on peer growth on the side too to help out, you know, whoever I can. No, that's a really good experience. Like all the experience you gain from that um, agency you're working with, you learn a lot from them too. Yeah, there's a lot that like I didn't know. Um, there's a lot that I figured out was important to be able to understand. I mean, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot there, so it's helped out to be able to make sure that it's helped out with me and my current clients too and being able to take what I learned from there and then put uh, utilizing that for my current clients. So it's been helpful. So prior to working at an agency, were you just uh, working in your peer growth media full time then? Like before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was, I, yeah for like two years I was working at peer growth. Yeah, sorry. So can you describe to us what you did on a typical day while you were working on peer growth media full time? Yeah, so like I'll get up at like six uh, sometimes I'll hit the gym first and then um, obviously make sure that I'm checking emails too, make sure like nothing's going crazy with clients or anything like that. And then I'll come back after the gym and just kind of get into work, make sure I'm checking all of my campaigns, make sure I'm checking in all my clients, you know, um, social media to make sure, you know, everything's firing away correctly. And then just kind of uh, digging in. Once, I, once I'm done with that, then I'm like working on tasks that need to be done for those clients, like, you know, maybe setting up a content strategy or uh, taking a look at the analytics from each campaign, things like that, those small things. And then we'll get into like, okay, how do I get more clients? And so we'll go into like, okay, who might need some help? Uh, checking out other people's social medias to make sure, you know, would I be able to provide some value to these clients? Should I reach out? Things like that. And sometimes we'll jump in on calls. Every day kind of varies though, because, you know, sometimes I'll have meetings during the day. So like, type of things can kind of change, but for the most part, it's just like gym, emails, auditing all the clients, jumping into meetings if I have any, and then just finishing out some tasks. So then when you mean uh, analytics, are you talking about like Facebook and Google Analytics, like searching um, for what audiences or customers look for? 
Um, it's looking at the results of the campaigns, looking at, you know, um, let's say a person is an e-commerce client, like I have a Benchy company that I work with, looking like at what pages are they landing on and where they're coming from, are they coming from my campaigns or are they like organic traffic, uh, are they coming from Instagram, are they coming from Facebook, things like that, and then seeing, okay, what pages are they leaving on, that, why haven't they purchased, uh, how many people have added to the cart, stuff like that. Well, and uh, you're doing all that yourself? Yeah. Yep. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, lot to, there's a lot to do, man. You got to wear a lot of hats when you're just starting out. Yeah, because uh, uh, we are uh, our podcast here. We have our own website too, but it's so yeah. much to handle already that <laughs> with the two of us, <laughs> I feel like we barely even had time to do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's tough, man. I mean, you just got to be able to make sure, I don't know, for me at least, like my days, they're like 6 a.m. to like 1 a.m. now, and most of the time just spent on work. So, yeah, there's, I don't really have too much time for leisure. We weekend sometimes, but most of the time it's just work. It's a grind, man. Yeah. <laughs> so for clients that you're taking, do you do uh, local clients in the same part of Minneapolis here, or do you do, you do it from anywhere and everyone from in the state mm-hmm. and out of the state? Yep. So... Most, most of my clients, I think every one of my clients has been in Minnesota based, but not all the target audiences are in Minnesota. If that makes sense. Do you uh, meet them face to face or do you just like normally contact them through online? We'll have meetings to be able to like, like monthly meetings to be able to like go over stuff. Uh, but for the most part, it's just like emails and uh, messaging, even on Facebook and stuff like that too. So a uh, little bit of both. Okay. So how how hard or easy is it to work with your clients? Because like I asked you earlier, some some people, they don't know what they want until they see the result. And then if they like it or don't like it, they want you to change it. Pretty simple. I would say depending on the client, right? So like I'll have great clients that let me kind of do whatever because they know like they or they trust in like my work. And they know like there's a reason that I have a business that has done well for clients and so they'll let me do my thing. But there's some clients who are like, um, like to be nitpick, like they like to nitpick. And so like, yeah. they'll like want to change like a small shot in the video or like they'll be like, this font should be in the corner and not in the middle of the video, stuff like that. So like those type of clients can be difficult. Those are clients that you typically don't want. Uh, you kind of want the clients that, you know, just kind of let you do your thing and be able to, you know, make sure that, I guess to make sure that you know you have to let them know that you had the best interest for them too. So like, yeah, there's there's good clients and there's bad clients. It just depends. I guess that's where that uh, excellent communication skill that you have come in. You uh, can I don't smooth know. talk. You can smooth talk to them. Uh, I think you should be like this. <laughs> I don't know uh, if I have those types of skills, yeah. but yeah, yeah, it, it def- yeah, that definitely matters for sure. Yeah, because right now I'm studying uh, web development and. Sometimes you would spend months putting together a website and your client said, I don't like that, change it. And then that can be really frustrating. So I'm sure you experience the same thing. For sure. It happens all the time. But uh, that's, just, that's just a part of the game, you know. It's their business, so I just have to understand, you know, like they want the best for the business. And they, this is their business that, you know, we're creating and that we're putting out there. So if they want some changes, then it's totally understandable. So, uh, Christian, seeing that you uh, also help promote some uh, Hmong businesses too, yeah. Uh, how does the Hmong culture affect what you do? I thought, like, I hate to say this because I don't think it's true anymore, but I think I used to think that, you know, like the Hmong people, they didn't want to invest, so they're super cheap. But I don't think that's 100% true. It just matters on how you communicate and show that you can do good work and for them to be able to trust you. Um, and they'll be more than likely to, you know, invest. And so I've kind of just been op- more open-minded to, you know, not believing in the stereotypes of, like, Hmong businesses being cheap. Um, more about figuring out how can I provide value for that uh, Hmong business and what way can I build that relationship. Even though, like, there's a lot of Hmong stereotypes about businesses and stuff like that, I found out that that actually is more of like a, that's an everybody thing rather than a Hmong stereotype thing too. So I don't know if the culture really affected too much of, you know, what I do in business and working with Hmong clients. What now that I see nowadays, like, it's all about trust, you know, like uh, if someone don't, doesn't trust you, you're going to tell it to all their friends and family and then that kind of ruins the business too. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, building trust is huge. And I think on top of that, uh, a lot of the Hmong people, at least the old people, they don't 
really understand how all this works too much, so they 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 get hesitant. Yeah, yeah, you know that's a big thing. Like, when I first started, everybody's like, "What do, what do you do? Like, why are you paying up? Like, why are you paying Facebook for? Like, what does that mean?" And then like, so I really had to like get better at communicating what I do to my potential clients, you know, because a lot of them are just like, "Why do you charge so much?" Or to them, but they, they think it's a lot. But like, why do you charge so much? And um, what do you mean there's an advertising budget? Where are you spending that budget? And like, what do you mean like you're paying a person on Instagram to promote my stuff? Like, why would they just post it for free? Stuff like that. So, communicating like my services to you know, I guess most businesses because they're not really in it. I think it's 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 been a little bit difficult, but like I think I've got better at making sure they understand exactly what we do. So communication is huge. You ever uh, think about? Putting together a seminar and teaching the monk community more about marketing, so they understand yeah, more about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, I uh, I actually at the Monk National Development Conference to be a sort of that. H and D, right? Yeah, cool. yeah. I I just did a workshop out there about uh, kind of what I do social media. So, um, yeah. I mean, I do the workshops, and uh, uh, I've been trying to you know push a lot of more people to be able to uh, get on. Facebook and get on social media and learning how to run your know, ads and stuff like that because it's so cheap right now. Like hundred dollars can get you like ten thousand impressions, which is you can't do that anywhere else. Um, so it's super huge, and I've been trying to you know push more into the milk community. I think that's really why I kind of do what I do as well. Like I don't know if you guys see my content, but like I try to put out more content about social media just so like people around me. I don't even care if they work with me. I just want people to be able to win. And, I think like you know, if you really figured out how to run Facebook ads, and if you really figured out social media, then you know you could really actually just do what you like to do and uh, be able to win. And so that's really why you know I started putting out content. I just want people to know about you know the opportunity that that is out there. So besides Facebook, have you tried Google as well, like Google Ads? So at, at my workplace, we do we use Google Ads. We're actually pretty big on Google Ads. Um, which I, I think Google Ads is a good opportunity if you know how to utilize it. Um, but that's the same thing with everybody, everything else too, right? So yeah, I've used it before. Do you have a preference or do you think Google or Facebook, uh, one is better than the other? Or do you think they have their own uh, purpose? I think they, they definitely have their own purposes. And I think it depends on what client, what type of client you are or what type of business you are. Sorry. Because um, like, let's say you are, let's say you're a business um, and, uh, you know, you're not going to get a lot of traction on Facebook. I mean, you can't, you can build brand on Facebook, but like you would rather spend your time on like what people are searching for. Cause bit like business to business, to business is pretty direct about, you know, what it is. And so you can pretty much figure out, you know, what keywords people are searching for. And that'll do, I think that that might do better. Or you could even utilize LinkedIn to be able to target like job titles. So, it just really varies, man. I really like social media, though, because you can build brand on them. Just meaning, like, Google is a lot, just blue letters. So what that means, like, when people search, they're just seeing blue letters. They're, you're not really standing out. Like, if there's your ad and someone else's ad, then, like, you know, you can't really stand out in that environment. But, like, if you're on Facebook, they can create a video, and then your brand can be out there. People can see your logo, and you're more visual. And I think that, that resonates with people and that really intrigues people more rather than blue letters on Google. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I've tried Google and Facebook and some other social media sites before and I noticed that there's, uh, they have their own different surf- services and purpose that you can try. It's really intriguing how that works for both. Yeah, I mean, Google, I, I like both of them, but I do like Facebook a lot more. I think a, a cool opportunity is like you can uh, use you can target YouTube videos, so like based on search impressions, so like us uh, based on ser- people's searches intent. So like let's say you're looking for top ten tips for podcasts, right? And then um, you'll leave that page that you went on on Google, and then you'll go watch like a like a video about something else on YouTube, and that the ad right before that video will be like top ten things to get your podcast to hundred thousand dollars, but that ad is not relevant to the video but it pops up because you searched she you searched about that topic yes i agree yeah that's what i noticed too yeah so that's google um 
because Google owns YouTube. So yeah, uh, super huge opportunity there. So I mean, it just like you said, it just really depends on what what type of business you are, and, uh, where your audience is. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. So you say you've been doing this for two and a half years now, give or take around that time. Yeah. So what would you say is the uh, the best business or the most interesting business that you've worked with so far? <laughs> uh, man, and you can list a few too. Yeah, I like a lot of what we've done. I think I can't say there's too many that I didn't like. So like we worked with Soda, super fun. We helped do the grand opening, and that kind of blew up. They went for like six figures in like three months. Uh, but the grand opening, nice. we, yeah, the grand opening we uh, we helped. Like we invited a Minnesota Vikings player. We brought in like Minnesota uh, of, uh dancers to come in. Um, we had like this uh, soft opening rep the week before. So what we did was we brought in like foodies from Instagram that have like a big following that are local. And we invited them to come get some free ice cream, try it out before everybody else, and then they posted it uh, before the grand opening. So that you know drove awareness for that grand opening and sort of killed it. So that's one of the probably one of the funnest things that we did because it was, it was kind of like event marketing but also social media marketing at the same time and uh, that was super fun campaign uh, we were Adam Yang that was fun to be on a political campaign the good thing yeah so it was fun to be able to work with him I think fun to talk about it was a super fun project too you know I love seeing Mo businesses thrive me being Mo as well so like being able to help them like their video got like a thousand likes part it reached around like 70,000 people and then they doubled their packs, sold in two weeks, huge. But uh, one, one, of, I think one client right now that I'm really interested in is like this bedsheet company that I work with. You know, it's just bed sheets. But what we're doing with them is super, super fun. Like we're working with a lot of influencers, and they're pretty much like we're working with influencers, sending them free product, and then they're posting on Instagram, and that has really drove sales for this business. And so it's just kind of fun to be able to play play around with a product as simple as bed sheets, and to be able to stand out and uh, help them be able to grow their brand so it's been real fun to work with them do you like a good challenge like that oh yeah for sure like you know trying to sell something that is like it's not the most appealing thing it's bed sheets you know it's, like what's the big deal you can't really make a bed sheet look all that great either um but i think it's just it has been fun i think one thing that we did was like we really figured out a niche and target audience for that product and uh, because it's organic sheets, and so organic and Egyptian sheets, and so we'll work with influencers that are just uh, that are all about like non-GMO or like organic or like being very eco-friendly. And uh, because they have an audience that actually trusts their opinion, that audience more is more likely to convert um, into sales. And so it's been real fun to be able to work with them. So yeah, I do love a good challenge, man. Right on. Earlier you told us that you don't have much spare time because you're so busy. But come on now, you need you you need at least like some break too, you know. So <laughs> my question is, uh, sure. what do you like to do during your spare time? Because you, I know, I mean, you sure at least have some spare time, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> but most, but I mean, like on the weekdays, probably not as much. But during the weekends and stuff like that, I'll take some time to kind of just. Uh, chill out, chill out, and kind of lay back. So like, like this past weekend, I went off my buddy's birthday party and stuff, and stuff like that. So, um, but what I do in my free time, I I love playing basketball. So I'll you know get some shots up at LA Fitness or something like that. Um, I love watching basketball, but basketball season is over. I kind of like playing games here and there. So like whenever I can, I'll I'll try to sneak some games in. But I try not to play too much and get too caught up in that because those could be like long hours of playing and. I'd rather spend time working. So, um, yeah, man, those are some of the things I kind of focus on. It's kind of like sports games, kind of the regular top 25-year-old guys type of stuff. So these business that you have marketed, right, like take the ice cream shop, for example. Yeah. Do you, do you ever, like, just go back every now and then to see how they're doing and maybe because you help them out, they might give you some free ice cream here and there? Yeah, for the most part, like, I still, like, most of the time, like, I'll still work with these clients, so, like, and I have a good relationship with those clients, too, so, like, yeah, I always go back. They do hook it up sometimes, because I know the owners real well. Um, like, sometimes I'll bring, like, friends from, from out of state, and the owner will kind of just hook them up with, like, probably your best part. Like that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, like, Tiger Bite, like, they give me a uh, beer, so, um, yeah. Anything free in general, that's 
that's nice. Yeah, exactly, man. So, free stuff is always cool. Nice. <laughs> 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 so, Christian, uh, what advice would you give someone to someone uh, who would one day want to start their own marketing agency? Um, I would say, first of all, do you, do you have to figure out, like, do you actually have, like, a passion and real reason for starting a marketing agency other than money? Uh, because, you know, if, if it's just about money, then you're going to burn out. You're not going to like what you do. So the biggest thing is to make sure that you are, you're starting it with the right intent of whatever it might be, um, that you have the right intent and it's not about money. I mean, money is going to be tied to it, but that can't be your main focus. It has to be something bigger than that. Like for me, I'm in it because, you know, I, I, I like helping people out and I always have. And so, I, you know, a marketing agency was just something that I was able to just help people out with like the ice cream shop was like a first time entrepreneur his first business venture but for me to kind of help him uh have a successful business was huge for me and i I'd much rather i would like i would do that that type of stuff for free you know so um biggest thing is making sure you have the right intent when you're jumping into um a type, any type of business yes yeah, I really sound advice. I definitely agree because uh, if you only go for the money, you're not gonna last for long term. You have to really go for what you uh, have passion in, just yeah. to uh, really push yourself exactly. out there. I think like if you want to do it for free, then it'd be hard for you to keep doing it uh, because you, if you actually loved it, then you would do it for free. I guess a good example would be you know when I first started, I did it for free for the first six months because I knew like that would help me. Be- build rep but you know i would people wouldn't do that for free for six months if they didn't actually like like what they did you know so yeah uh, making sure that you have a different intent other than money is huge yes definitely agree uh so christian uh where do you see yourself five years from now <laughs> um this is always a hard question because like, <laughs> yeah i i don't like to like plan too far in the head like that and i kind of just Make sure that you know I know what I'm, I'm I know what I'm doing each and every day and just kind of working towards that. I say in five years I'll be thirty. I'll probably want to be able to be able to go back to business full time and also be able to, from a business standpoint, have a successful business um, and doing what I love each and every day. So I don't know, kind of general answer, but yeah, that's solid. Yeah, that's pretty solid. You're basically building your uh, business slowly, you know? So, I mean, eventually you get there once people start recognizing what you do. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just building slowly, learning a lot. I'm, I'm just like, you know, trying a lot of different things to be able to see, you know, um, when I'm 30. Because, like, the reason I started career growth was, like, I mean, obviously to help people too, but it's also to be able to learn, you know? So, like, I helped out a lot of restaurants. I think I know kind of, like, the formula to be able to have a successful restaurant. Or, like, uh, I've helped out like a Betsy company, but the real learning thing there was like e-commerce. So if I'm going to start like an e-commerce brand, then I, you know, I'll know kind of exactly what to do and how to execute that. And so I think for me, pure growth has just been an opportunity to be able to test and learn and be in different businesses and industries without actually owning that business for me to be able to learn from. And so I hope like when I'm 30, then I can be like, all right, this is the other thing I want to do. I want to create my own brand. Um, Let's say I want to sell like peanut butter or something like that. And when I'm 30, then I know exactly kind of, you know, what to do and how to sell it and what the best practices are. So, so uh, we forgot to ask you this. Why, why did you call your uh, company Pear Girls? <laughs> it was like, I don't, to be honest, it's like real, there's no real story there. I mean, like, it was like super basic. Um, I kind of like the word Pear, and then I wanted to help people grow. And then media was like a general term that like agencies will use sometimes. And so I saw that out there and I just kind of put that out there as well. So peer, that's where Pure Golf Media came from. All right. Interesting. So yeah. we're going to advance to our famous lightning round. Okay. So uh, our lightning round consists of the same three exact questions that we ask all our special guests. So you ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Question number one, where will you go for a vacation spot and why? Dubai or Spain? That's kind of where I want to go. No, why is that? I don't know. I just Spain has always looked like amazing to me, so I, I definitely want to get out there. Dubai has just been like it's so crazy. Like it's just been like a desert like five years ago, and now it's like a big like metro city and new technology and everything like that. So I just want to get out there and see like what they're doing. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing because like this show like um, all those movies and like some of the clips are from Dubai and everything. Dubai looks so amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So I, I definitely want to get out there and just kind of be there physically and see for myself. Like, oh yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, so question number two: What is your favorite book that you have read so far? I just finished um, Shoe Dog. You guys heard of that? No. Shoe no. Dog is uh, it's about the founder of Nike. He wrote it, so his name's Phil Knight, and so just it's just about his life story pretty much. It's super super cool because like you get to see the grind of his every day and kind of the crazy like fires he had to put out and um, all the type of battles he had. It's, his story is amazing. So if you have a chance, check it out. Nice. Uh, you said Shoe Dog, right? Shoe Dog. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. All right. And uh, question number three: What is one thing that you cannot live without? My phone. <laughs> <laughs> Super basic, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't know how. I, like, just this, like Memorial Day, we went to Wisconsin for a wedding. Um, and my phone broke. Oh. So, <laughs> I, uh, on the way back home, I didn't have my phone, and I, I felt like I lost all connections to the world. So <laughs> it was tough, man. The invention of the phone is probably one of the best things ever. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Christian, where or how can people reach you? Yeah, so they can hit me up on Facebook, uh, just Christian Yang. You can find my page there. Instagram is Christian, the letter K is in Kellogg Yang. And then I am on LinkedIn, just Christian Yang as well. So those are probably the three best spots to hit me at. Right. And uh, you say you also run podcasts, right? Well, yeah, is yeah. it called The Grind? Yeah, The Grind with Christian Yang. Gotcha. Okay. I was trying, trying to search that up last time, but I searched I searched The Grind, but it came out with a different podcast, yeah. I think. It's tough with podcast names nowadays because like, there's so many out there. And it's just like, I, I don't know. I don't want to think too much about the name of the podcast. So <laughs> yeah. I just went with whatever. <laughs> okay all right sounds good um yeah so that we're gonna conclude our podcast if you like this podcast then please share this with your friends and family also please visit our website mongamericanbuzz.com for more details as well as links to our special guests last but not least please subscribe to our podcast to get the latest episodes thanks for listening